Hi, and welcome to Dear Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and pleasure to be here with you today. Today's show features Gail Thackeray, a sixth generation Reiki master and medium who helps you with health, love, finances, and more. This show, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger, has won the COVR Award for Best Radio and Podcast. Welp Magazine named Dare to Dream, one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. It's high ranking under self-improvement in Apple Podcast and has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and for a Webby Award. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work out in the world. So if you'd like to become a facilitator or you'd like to take their class, go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com. I am Debbie Dashinger, and I'm a media visibility specialist. I am a book writing coach, and I take your book from idea to self-publish. And if you should go through somebody like a publishing house, you can come to me and my team to take your book to a guaranteed international bestseller. We've been doing it for 12 years for authors. And the final thing I do is I teach you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. I've got a boutique publicity agency. I've got about five clients at any one time. So I really know the system, how to get you visible and as spiritual messengers, you came here right now with a message to be heard. Please let me give you a gift so I can show you how. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. My guest, Gail Fackray, sixth generation Reiki master, has traveled extensively working with spiritual healers and psychic surgeons around the world. Gail is an exceptional medium with tremendous connection to spirit. She helps people realign their energies for better health, love, finances, and to live their soul purpose. Gail can see people's past lives, tap into their body energetically, and often gives messages from spirit. Gail is in tune with crystals and stones, working on people's energy fields and using crystal healing to protect and enhance the aura. Gail is the author of a few books, and those books are on spiritual healing and psychic mediumship development. If you would like to learn more about her, go to gailfackray.com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Gail to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. Welcome. Thank you, Debbie, so much for having me on. I'm so excited. I am excited too. You and I, I guess I've been going to Conscious Life Expo whatever. I don't know what it's been, 10, 12 years. I've worked with them the last maybe five and helped out in various ways. But what I know mostly as an attendee, I've always seen your booth. I've always seen you, we've passed in the halls, but I have never formally met you. And so it is a pleasure to establish a real relationship. So thank you for being here. I know your personality is amazing. And I'm curious, how did you go from Robin Harris, actress, to Gail <laughs> Thackeray, leader and healer? How did that journey happen? Um, so you've done a little bit of research on me. So I yes, I used to be an actress. Um, I was actually at college in England. I mm-hmm. uh, was going to be a vet. Um, I was at medical school. And I was the Marlboro cigarette model. And so they brought me to the States for two weeks. And I got cast a little role on Baywatch. I got cast in some movies. And I was like, well, should I go back to college for seven years? Uh, yeah, I like the weather in California. Maybe, maybe I'll check it out for a while. And so that's what got me here. And, you know, and it just seems like... Um, Sometimes we go in different paths. It's like the universe sends us. I've been reading this this book, mm. Surrender, and it's like the universe sometimes just sends you things, and that's always kind of been my thing. It's just just say yes to whatever the universe is presenting. So anyway, that's what got me to California, and I ha- I was an actress. Then I had a business. I had an internet business, 
was not in the psychic realms at all. Now, uh, looking back, there were certain things. Now I can see things. But, you know, I never thought, I, I like the psychic stuff, but I never thought that I could do any of that. Mm. Um, and so what happened was I had this experience where it was kind of an awakening for me. And I had this business and I was busy working in the internet. I had a photo stock library. And uh, I went one, I went to this health fair, kind of like a conscious life, but it was a health fair. And there was a psychic there and she was going around the room and she's picking people. So I'm like, oh, pick me, pick me, you know. Uh, and it was me, me with my mom. Well, she didn't. So uh, she was having a workshop. So we thought, well, we'll sign up for the workshop and maybe we'll get a reading, right? <laughs> and so we go to this workshop and we get there and there's a sign that says how to become a medium. We didn't even know what the workshop was. We just thought we were gonna go and try to get a reading. And, um, and so she, I'm thinking, I can't do that, but okay. And so she has us do this exercise where we do kind of a light meditation and then she has us get up on stage and we're supposed to bring in the spirit next to us and it's for somebody in the room. So I, so I get up and I'm like, okay, I, I think I got this wrong. Maybe, you know, I thought we were supposed to make up a story. But anyway, mine was for this guy over here and it's his grand Pierre Marseille and he's telling me about the scaffolding company that he had and then his dad took it and then he was supposed to take it, but he became a pilot and he did this and da, da, da. And so I go, okay, was any of that correct? And the guy goes, oh my God, that was my grandfather's name. That's what he did. This is, I had that picture in my house. This is, and I'm, so I'm like, um, okay, maybe it was a lucky guess, you know, <laughs> right? I just did not believe it. Um, so for me, it was like this kind of, like almost like it had been waiting there. So I start telling everybody all kinds of things and I go home. And that night I can't sleep. I come back and I'm like, I've got a message for you and I've got a message for you. And okay, this this was fun, but how do we turn this off? Because I can't live like this. This is like insane. I mean, like I couldn't drive. I couldn't, I couldn't even put my pants on the right way around. I was like in like space cadet. And so it was this unusual thing where one minute I was normal and the next minute I could do this stuff, but it, it kind of comes at a cost. And I did. I did kind of learn that, that, you know, you can't, if you get that deep and do it that strong, it's really hard to switch back and forth. That's why you see some psychics that are really, you know, kind of out there. Um, and so I think there's a balance, like we're supposed to be here to have our own experiences and, and to be in the physical world. And so I, I teach now how to do healing and mediumship, which I think comes in the same way. So, it, to me, it's about connecting in with the other side. We have this spiritual world around us and we can connect into that, whether you are trying to connect with loved ones that have passed, whether you are looking for guidance, talking to spirits, or whether you're looking to do healing work. So I know a lot of your viewers have probably done Reiki and channeled healing and spiritual healing. And to me, it's the same kind of thing. You're, you're getting your vibration to a certain level it's almost like we have to bring our vibration higher uh, and the spirits that are helping, they got to bring the vibration lower so we can meet and that vibration where we can connect and be in that zone. But I think you can only hold it for a little bit of time and it's very difficult to hold that kind of energy and be in the physical world. And so when this first happened to me, I mean, I, I thought it was amazing, but I also, my, my kids thought I had gone nuts. I couldn't, I couldn't even remember to pick them up from school. Um, you know, I couldn't do normal things. I couldn't do normal life, but I could tap in really strong and I could, I could look at a person's energy field, look at their body and say, okay, you've got this health problem. You've got that. This is why that's what you've got. This is your past life. And I could do all of that. But I think there's, you know, there's, to me, I tell my students, you switch it on. You work in that environment and then you switch it off and you go about your daily life and you, you can't, you know, be in that all the time. You know, if you, if you had the time to go and spend a month meditating in the Himalayas, I think most people would be much more psychically in tune. When you're about your daily life and you've got things going on, you're just not as in tune. 
And so people say, well, how can I do that? How can I be more psychic? How can I be more in tune? Um, and, I, you know, I teach them how, how to do it, which I think a lot of it is through uh, meditation techniques. But it's about raising your vibration, raising your energy and tapping into that, that other world. Um, but you can't be like that all the time. You can't have that high energy all the time. So I went from having a business to all of a sudden I knew there was something else. I didn't even know what I was doing. And I was married at the time. And I said, I'm, I'm actually going to go off. Um, I'm going to do some travels. I, I'm going to do some spiritual stuff. My husband thought I'd lost my mind because I had quite a successful business. <laughs> so he's like, what do you mean? <laughs> Where are you going? What are you doing? And um, it was life changing because I just felt like, what I'm doing in the physical world, it's just, it's not enough. There's something more here. And I went on this journey of discovery. I went to visit a lot of different psychics and healers. I ended up going all over the world, working with John of God, who's very controversial, but amazing healer in Brazil. Um, I went to Australia and worked with the Aboriginals. Of course, I went back to England, worked with the Druids worked in the Philippines with the psychic surgeons, um, studied Reiki. Um, so before all this had happened, I kind of connected the dots. So my auntie had come over um, before I had this awakening. My auntie had come over from England and she used to be in insurance. She used to be an insurance adjuster. She had an experience one day driving home where she comes around the corner and there's a massive UFO, like the size of a house sitting in the field. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> and so she's like, you know, doesn't believe in any of this kind of stuff. He's totally not in the spiritual world. This UFO appears to her. And after that, she went through some other changes. She ended up changing her career and becoming a Reiki master. So she'd come over and said, hey, I'm, I'm going to do an attunement on you. I'm going to do a Reiki attunement. I'm going to show you, I'm going to teach you level one Reiki. But, oh, yeah, that sounds great, right? So she'd done this like a few weeks before this awakening happened. So I think that had a lot to do with it. And I, I'm sure a lot of your viewers have done Reiki. And, but when you when you learn Reiki, you you are attuned or tapped into these Reiki guides in the spirit world. So it's a way of kind of like opening you up psychically and allowing that connection. And so when she first did this to me and, and showed me how to do Reiki, I'm, I'm, I didn't feel it. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I really felt, I felt the tingle. I felt, I felt this, you know, I felt something happening. And for me, I'm not very uh, psychically sensitive. I'm more clear audience. So I didn't feel it. So I'm like, oh, I didn't really feel anything. And then I started doing Reiki on people and they were like, wow, that's amazing. And, you know, my knee, I had all this pain and now it's completely gone. And, and I'm like, like us i'm not feeling anything i didn't really you know I, so i'm thinking that these people is just wishful thinking um some people are more sensitive than i am and they feel it they feel being that channel of energy so i would get more messages and people who clear audient like me you get messages it just feels like your thoughts so it feels like oh that's just my imagination i'm just making that up and so when i had this first kind of uh, breakthrough I just thought, oh, I'm just making this up. This is just silly. But I couldn't have been making it up. So then I, I go traveling around the world and I meet a lot of different healers and I see some amazing stuff. And uh, really came back to the feeling that a lot of these different spiritual healing modalities, they might have come from a different tradition based in, in you know different spirits or different different knowledge, but it's all really about the same thing. I think most of them believe that we have a spiritual world around us uh, and that we tap into that spiritual world. You know, John of God, the Filipinos, they're very Catholic, so they believe that it's Catholic spirits, you know, and they, they, set, they set the foundation with prayer. Um, the traditional uh, Dr. Yusui Reiki is set in Japanese tradition and we, we connect with the masters in Japan and other masters. I teach Tibetan, so Tibetan masters as well. 
Um, but I think a lot of these different spirit, spiritual healing modalities believe that we have a spiritual world around us and that we can access this as a healer and become a channel of that energy. And when you allow yourself to tap in, not only can you be a channel of that healing energy, but you also will be given guidance um, on why a person has that issue. And so the more, the more I worked with different people, the more I saw the same thing, that we're made of an energy field. And that when we have a pain in our body, a physical problem in our body, it is connected to something else. It just doesn't appear. You don't just get a cancer lump. You don't just get a back problem. It is actually from energy that has become um, dense energy, difficult energy that has probably repeated over time. So you can, somebody comes for a healing, they can either come and say, oh, I have this uh, problem with finances, or I have this emotional problem, I have this connection with my sister, or, or I have uh, a pattern in this way. Something emotional or mental will come with, and maybe it's not physical yet. Um, or they can come physical, but it's still connected to something emotional. So the way I look at it is energy starts from our outer area. Um, so let's take like a, a difficult relationship, difficult romantic relationship. Um, so we have a difficulty because that's part of life. We were here to have these lessons, uh, to work through karma, to work through experiences um, for our soul growth. So let's say we're having a difficult romantic relationship. Well, so they, so they show up in our outer energy field. And at first it might not, it might be, you know, a wonderful experience. So we meet this person and we're like, oh, I have this great connection with them. I feel like they're my soulmate. Well, of course you do, because, you know, if we're going to have any kind of a, a, a good relationship or a difficult relationship, any kind of strong relationship, probably a soulmate. So that person is in your energy field. And when things get difficult, now you start arguing, start fighting. You, it's the thinking, emotional, the, uh, the mental part of that where they're irritating you. you know, you've got negative thoughts. So that's now a bit denser into your energy field. Then it starts really upsetting you. You can start to feel really triggered by it. You, know, you feel it in your body. You, you know, if you tune into how you feel about somebody, it's upsetting you, it's making you emotional, right? So the energy is getting stronger and it's coming further into your energy field. And if we allow it for a long enough time or we keep repeating this same feeling, eventually it's going to become physical. If it's a romantic relationship, it's going to resonate with your sacral chakra, which is the area just below your belly button. So if somebody comes and says, okay, I've got this problem in this area of my body, I've got fibroids or I've got an intestinal problem, it's a physical problem, most likely it's come from that area of the life from relationship areas. And so whether they come and say, I have this physical problem or whether they come and say, I've got this emotional problem, it's all connected. So a lot of what I saw when I first started with spiritual healing is um, people will come and say, I've got this physical problem. And when you release and do the healing on that physical problem, you're also working on that emotional problem. So let's say again, relationships, somebody comes and they got a physical problem in that area of the body and you do the spiritual healing. What happens is they'll now say, oh, I reconnected with that old boyfriend. Um, this came up again in my relationship with my wife. Um, but what happens is you're healing all of it. You can't just heal the physical without healing the underlying. And so I started taking groups around the world. I took a lot of groups to John O'Gard and people would come and they'd say, um, I, I have this cancer in my breast. And let me, if I may, I just want to yeah. ask you about that. I want to ask you about John of God because <clears throat> I know you were deeply connected with him. And also years ago, we all know that, that the disturbing news came out on some level. And I would love to ask you for your, and I'm not trying to be political, but your boots on the ground understanding 
of what went on with him and how he's doing today, because I could never tell. I mean, as a woman, as somebody who could be vulnerable going to a healer, you know, I think I resonated with a lot of the feelings out there. But as a metaphysician and somebody who's really tapped into sometimes how things work in this world, when you have somebody powerful who heals, uh, you know, the pharmacies don't like it, doctors don't like it, governments don't like it, and sometimes they will plant evidence that's not true. I don't know. But I'd love you to weigh in, if you don't mind, what that was and how he's doing, if you know. So, um, and I'm sure most of your viewers know what happened, but um, I was there for uh, probably 10 years. I probably took 25 groups down there as well as went by myself several times. I also took John of God to Toronto where we did a huge event with a lot of people. So I got to know John of God quite well. And I think it was 2018, it came out where supposedly he had molested a whole bunch of women, supposedly right. took them in this healing room and then um, was inappropriately touching them. And to such an extent that he actually went to jail. Um, I honestly think it's a bunch of political bullshit. Um, I, in the whole time I went, he never once made any kind of inappropriate gesture, motion. I never heard about anything. I mean, I went 25 times with a lot of women. I went myself. I was in his house by myself. I was in a hotel room in, with him in Toronto. Never once did he ever make any kind of pass at me. The room that they talk about is a very public room. It's a room that is off the side of the center that he would go in, but the door was open with staff coming and going and literally 200 people waiting outside for a photograph. So I find it very hard to believe. Hi. Now, I saw John as the man because John, John was a man who would then incorporate and do his work as a spiritual healer. And there was definitely a difference between him as a person and him as when he's incorporated and, and in this healing. And as a man, I saw him getting arguments with people. I saw him getting in, in, you know, fights over business or property or, you know, temper with somebody. Um, so, you know, he's not like an angel or anything. He was um, did he have had girlfriends on the side? He could possibly have had some, you know, um, girlfriends. I mean, he's a superstar. He had literally hundreds of people after every session and every girl wanted to be around him and, and you know, and get a photo with him. Um, he was a celebrity. Mm -hmm. So whether he had consensual stuff with, with girls outside of his marriage, possible, probable, I don't know. But as far as, as far as that, a lot of what went down, I mean, the people I know worked at the Casa, they never saw it either. So yeah. I, it, it lined up when the new president was coming in, it lined up with a lot of political stuff that was going on. Um, so did they just want him out? I don't know. I, I think Do you very, have any idea bad. how he's doing? Uh, well, he wasn't, he was in jail. Then he was back at his ranch. He was not allowed to do any spiritual work. He was basically on house arrest. I think he's gone back to jail again. I'm not sure. I'm not completely sure, but okay. it's very sad for the Casa because the Casa remains open. The energy there mm. is incredible because yeah. it wasn't real. It wasn't John, the man that was really, it was doing the healing. You had okay. these spirits mm. that would work through him, but mm. even if you were there and he's not there, the spirits are still there. So That's from what I've heard, the energy is still there, still mm. amazing. And then when you did this psychic surgery in the Philippines, the healing in Bali, what was important for you about that? What did you learn how to do? So I think I learned that it's really about tapping in to the other side and being a channel of the energy. Um, so it's not really that this person is doing it. It's more that this it's it's almost getting out of the way rather than trying. In fact, the more you try, the less it's going to happen. It's more about kind of getting out of the way and and allowing this process to happen through you, um, not trying or forcing to do anything. The first time I went to the Philippines, 
the uh, Ambrosio had been the healer in this region in Baggio for his his grandmother had been the healer, then his mother, then he'd become the healer. And then he decides he's passing the gift to me. <laughs> so I'm like, um, okay, <laughs> not sure uh, if I'm really up to this. And he, he started the session by opening his prayer book and setting the energy and doing the prayer. And so I'm there, I'm all excited to help. I've got the cotton wool and I'm standing by ready for the surgery. And uh, he client comes in, lays down, he opens his prayer book and he starts to pray to set the energy. And I literally passed out on the floor. And so <laughs> I come round and he's like, yeah, the energy is a bit strong, you know? So I did this like four or five times. I just kept fainting. And I'm like, look, I can't even, I can't even stay awake. How am I going to do this? And he's like, yeah, yeah, the energy is a little strong. And eventually I got to where he was doing a session and I was there and there are videos of me there helping and assisting. But I tell you, I felt like I was on the ceiling watching this thing. Um, and so to me, that was, it's all about really the energy, mm -hmm. the energy that setting the room, setting the energy and then allowing the spiritual beings to come and to work through you. And what about horses? Some of, some I... of the stuff, some of the stuff in the Philippines is fake. And, you know, they talk, ah. you know, there's a lot. So they basically open up the body and they put their hands inside the body. And you'll see like, you know, open blood and guts and even like pulling nails and pulling things out. And a lot of the, I think they add stuff to make it for tourists. I think a lot of people don't believe it unless they see like a lot of blood and stuff. That's crazy. <laughs> wow. And you have a connection to animals, right? I've seen yeah. pictures of you all dressed, uh, connecting with horses. What is your relationship with horses? Oh, well, I've, I've always loved horses. I have horses and I've ridden since I was little. Um, so, but you know, all, all animals and and once once this happened to me and i started delving into the psychic side of it and the the healing side of it um i realized that animals they already connect on that level and so our animals are already in tune they already um they already do healing work naturally they already telepathically we can talk to them they're already listening to us uh, we're a little bit dumb about being able to understand them and to listen to them but they they know already and they're they very much become our life partners and so you'll see animals come and they'll say have a hip problem or leg problem or an eye problem and it's actually not to do with them it's to do with whoever is their main caregiver so i see that a lot where um where it's something that's going on with the animal or even if it's like a behavioral thing it's to do with the person so i'll see like they'll say you know he, my dog is is always barking or he's always anxious or he's always doing this and then i'll look at the person and say okay what's going on in your life and a lot of it is what's going on in, in their life. Mm -hmm. So they're very much our yes, energetic for sure. our healers. Yeah, yeah. I saw you do a TV show and the host brought a dog for you to yeah. talk to, which is so cool. <clears throat> and I always think for animals, what a blessing. Because I've I've had this experience before, but what a blessing because they probably have so much to say. I feel like I'm super in tune with my dog, but still when you do a session like this, it's a whole nother level. It is next level communication with your animal and hearing from them. So I was wondering if I brought a canine to you, would you be willing Girl, to talk to yeah. You wanna do it? Yeah. Okay, I just need to bend down. And it's a sleepy dog. <laughs> Will you come with us? Will you meet somebody? Will you? Will you meet somebody, please? Yeah. Hello. Now, you might want to. Oh, you are such a sleepy girl. So, this is Shelby the dog. Oh, Shelby... he's so sweet. Oh, now. So, this is Gail Thackeray. 
she's my new friend. <laughs> I was thinking it was going to be a little brown one. Does she have a friend that's a little brown one? No, that's crazy, people. <laughs> I've never met Gail before, but just a minute. Oh, that's the one I was seeing. So Thank she was like, we're, we're both here. I think she's a little nervous about going first. She wants this one to go first. This is, um, this is Ziggy. This is hilarious. So Ziggy <laughs> wants to talk to you? Yeah. Okay. Now, so, so Ziggy's not your dog, right? Correct. Well, yes and no. Okay. It's like, you, you, I feel like you know, you know Ziggy but um, he's not like, it's not, so the other one's your dog, right? Is this your boyfriend's dog? That is correct. Okay. And so they're saying, oh, it's a new beautiful relationship. So are you getting married? Do you know, this is a wonderful relationship. I mean, you and the, you and your boyfriend, this is a fairly new, but it feels like you've known him for years. It feels like a soulmate connection. Thank you. We've been, uh, December will be five years. Yes. Okay. No, I feel like this is uh, this is the one. This is your soulmate, and and these two also feel like they've come together as soulmates as well. But I do feel like there's something like uh, moving in together, or there's something they're going to a different level. So I feel like there's something more permanent coming along. So this Ziggy is more the very quiet grounded one um what the other one begins with s what, what's shelby shelby uh -huh. shelby shelby gets to be she's the one like they they play off each other because she's a little bit more high hyper sometimes she gets a little bit anxious about things and then he's the one that kind of calms her down does that make sense mm-hmm and I see them like sharing like a bean bag. Do you have a bean bag? This is, I would lift it up, but I would have to put them down. But I have a black uh, faux fur, but it's a black <laughs> fur carpet. Like it's a beautiful little room rug and they both wow. like to sleep on it. And then yeah. at night he sleeps in a little bed and she sleeps next to the bed or on the, we sometimes pull the black fur in for her. Well, there's something about like they have their time when they're on the bed together. Like they have their, their felt like a bean bag comes in, the two of them lay together. That's kind of their special time where they get to sleep together, chat about things. And then they, <laughs> they either go home to their separate places or they have their own separate things. So they like their, they like their together time. Um, uh, so they're saying you're a shaman and you're not you're not doing enough of your uh your ceremonies uh so they're showing me like a circle shaman thing the stones involved there's the rattle involved they want to see you doing more of that i am a shaman this is absolutely <laughs> correct and i am dying to do more community and group work and online work. This is absolutely true. And I am at the same time about to do a huge presentation in another country. So, so they much were telling me another place. I was thinking at another, so it's probably the one in another country. Oh, but the I'm shaman seeing, work. I'm seeing somewhere. It's like, I'm going to a new location. I thought it was like a new location that you were going to have where you go regularly, like a new that's so, interesting and, because our back house is becoming available and rather than rent it out we're going to turn it into a healing center so it will yeah. not be this home it will be yeah so i'm seeing like regular you're going to be holding them regular like um every, every one saturday a month or you you like choosing like a regular thing and they're saying that would be really good because people will know and come it's almost like got a medicine wheel Mm -hmm. as well i don't know if you've drawn a medicine wheel in the back but there's a drawn circle of some kind in the back wow you're good so <laughs> you're really good this um so from time to time there's a mandala or a sand painting that we that shamans like to do it's in order to get rid of things that don't work to bring in what you prefer to 
you know, you could put objects in there, you blow the energy I see, in. I see the people coming in. They've each got mm -hmm. a rock, a stone. They're each coming to put something in there. And then at the end, it's it's gone, taken away, and the fresh start the next time. Right. Yeah. Yes. So, so they're going to help with this. So they'd like to be there when you, when you do that. Um, and then you've got somebody coming in to kind of do a blessing on the land itself. Somebody's coming to to do the four corners, to do the, somebody like a priest or a shaman is coming. That's not you. You've got somebody coming to kind of like set the energy. You know not yet, I, but I love that idea. Yeah, this is somebody's coming in and they've got the little bells. They like the bells. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have some bells too. They're on like a... On a a red string with the two bells on the end? You know, I don't. I actually have this old bell from the Bodhi tree a million years ago um, that I use in my shamanic practice, but um, I actually need to buy the exact bells you're talking about. <laughs> okay, because I see them telling you to go around, set the energy before, before you do this. Um, and so your boyfriend was not in this field, but now you're getting him into it? No, um, he's not in this field at all. Okay. Um, he's going to have something to do with the property or the setting it up at least. He, yeah, that's right. He, yeah, he likes it. He's and he's into all him. of this. Yeah. So I feel like he's going to be a little bit more involved in this project that you're doing. And, um, and then you're recording it as well and putting it out to other people. But I feel like it's very special in person. Mm. Oh my gosh. So this is like, this is what they're talking about when they're saying you kind of go into the next level. Cause I think your boyfriend's going to be involved like as a kind of as a business too. Like he's helping you. Mm -hmm. The project you have together. And so they're just saying, uh, he's saying they love it when you go to the beach. They haven't been in a while, but he likes it throwing sticks by the beach. So there's somewhere you go. Yes, we like to take them to, you would know the places, you live in Los Angeles too. So Rosie's in Long Beach is an off-leash beach. Um, Huntington Beach is off-leash. Uh, we've taken them up north to like Pismo, which is spectacular. And then they can, everybody can spend time off-leash. And it's true, Shelby has been more recently to the beach, but little Ziggy has not. And I didn't even know he liked it. Oh you yeah, okay. and that's that, that's nice. So I think you've all been together, right? Yes, we have. They'd like more of that. I said that's really fun. And the golden treats that you give him. Ah, <laughs> you know what that is? Um, golden gosh. treats. It's like some little nugget thing that you get sometimes. Okay. Yeah, I don't know which one it is. We have so many treats. <laughs> Switch him around, but I'll pay attention. It's called a golden, golden nuggets, a golden something. Oh, they look, look like little golden squares. Okay. <laughs> I'm wondering if how he's doing his. Okay, um, and, and I was just going to say he's, he had some difficulty with his paw or a pain in his right paw. Um, not that I know of, no. That's to do with your boyfriend's uh, right leg, which is to do with changes at work for him. So you mean Rob having Rob. changes at work? Yes. So Rob, like there's some change coming up and he's not really sure. He doesn't really like change. And so he, uh, he's been told we just kind of go with the flow. It's actually a good thing and it's going to work out. Um, so that's why this one's had kind of a sticky paw. It feels like he's had a bit of a pain in his front right paw but that's to, just to do with rob so when rob just says okay fine i'll just go with it do you know what that's about um yeah his his job's a little intense and they yeah it's it's intense they've that's asked him I'm to doing. do something new or different and he's a little reluctant hmm. but tell him um just to say yes and it's going to work out pretty good for him so okay. it's actually it's going to be good they had um they had a brother uh, not a real bro blood brother, but a dog brother who died. Is that, is that a darker brown one? Like a little bit more? No. It's like, hmm. 
I'm seeing I'm seeing one that's a little it's about the same size as, as him and a darker more ready brown. Do you know oh that? no this is this is all of Ziggy right here with his let me get your head in there. So what does pass? Does it begin with oh on? Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. Is that one also look like the one like hers? The, the other one that looked like the white. Is it a white fluffy one? He was a white dog. That is correct. Um, like a white fluffy one, a little bit like not fluffy. Like, he was like what had sort of wiry hair, and he died. Um, I think this Friday will, if I have the timing right, it'll be about three weeks since he died. Okay. So I'm seeing actually two that have passed over that's around them. One is one is the one uh, oval. I don't know. Something Oliver. Like okay. Um, and then there's another reddy brown one. Maybe that's one that Rob had that you don't know about. Hmm. There's, there's two around in spirit. And uh, that's why they're saying go to the beach because I feel like this other one was at the beach. Yeah. He was. And this, this other one have a cat. Do you have a cat? No. I love cats, but we don't have one. Okay. Because I feel like there's a, a a cat in spirit, but I feel like this one had a cat. I've had cats in the past. I've had two cats, three cats. Yeah. Yeah. It's um kind of a tabby cat. Hmm. Is that one of your cats? I don't no. think so. No. Okay. So... So I guess that he used to go to the dog park and what happens is when when a dog passes, but then you you have another dog and you're going out doing the same thing. It's like they're there with them all the time. So they're like, when you go and you're having fun and you're throwing the stick and you're doing all that, I'm there as well. So I get to go along too. So, yeah. Um, so Shelby and... Oval Oliver Oliver they, yeah they were they were they were brother and sister then they were yaw too they were not blood anything nobody was nobody's blood no, but they were they were like together like you had the two of them together yeah uh, Oliver was is also Rob's dog not my dog um, but they all you know became community oh yeah well that one's still there and Oliver had a very good long life. Mm -hmm. um and at the end it just felt like there were multiple things failing like did you did you try to fix things but then something else happened it feels like it feels like it was just time it was like one thing after another after another yeah yeah, yeah. he had an enlarged heart and he, like you know he had a few things on his face and he had a lipoma and his joints it was clear he couldn't quite you know yeah it just felt tired. It just felt like, you know, time. But he'll come back. But right now he's, he's just around them. Yeah. Having fun. Yes, we were all there at his passing. And it was quite tragic and beautiful all at once oh. to, you know, help a being go to the Rainbow Bridge and to cross over. And yeah, it was really something. But he was beautiful and he's missed. Say thank you, Gail. Thank you so much. You that was wonderful. You. Thank you for communicating. And back on the rug he goes. Well, that was very cool. Thank well, you. Well, pass, pass Shelby up a second. Shelby yeah. Wants. Come on, Sleepy. Well, there we go. <laughs> and all her glory. So <laughs> Shelby, you get worried about her being alone. So I think she fusses when you're leaving. But as soon as you're gone, I just want to let you know she's fine. Some of it's faking it a little bit. So like when you're leaving the house, you see you feel bad that you're leaving her. I feel like she's kind of anxious. And it's like the minute you left, if you had a camera, she's fine. <laughs> when I leave, she does this thing with the paw and looks at me like, you're doing what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to talk to her. I love you. I'll be back. But you're telling my secrets. Don't tell my secrets. <laughs> I know. Um, sometimes she just wants to know what's going on. 
sometimes she gets anxious. So when you're leaving, if you just say to her, I'm going, I'm going, da, 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 I'll be back at five o'clock, hmm. right? She, then she feels better. And if you're not back at five o'clock, just send her a telepathic message like, oh, I'm running late, I'll be back at six. Right. Okay. Like, yes. She just she don't sometimes doesn't know you're not clear on where you're going and what you're doing. But if you're clear about it, then she'll feel much better. She'll feel more at ease. If she knows what time you're coming back. And she can tell the time. If you just tell her what time you're coming back, she'll expect you at that time. Wow. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. And then sometimes she picks up on your energy. So if you're if she seems like she's fussy, a bit anxious, just kind of sit down and go, okay mom's fine mom's calm mom's good and she'll calm down but mostly with her it's about like not knowing not being confused as to what's going on what's happening and if you're worried about things or you're stressed you have a lot of different things going on sometimes she's kind of picking up on these mixed energies and she's not sure what's going on either so she gets a little bit anxious but if you calm her down and say i'm good i'm fine yeah and and sometimes you get indigestion she says sometimes she gets indigestion and it's it's she said it's more stress taking on too many things she said you can do a lot of things but you need to take the time to like once in a while just when you get too much on your plate you just got to take five minutes and do a little meditation and bring yourself back to center Mm -hmm. so i feel like tightness or pain in your intestines and it's really just stress Okay. You can also yeah, try I, some castor oil in your belly button. That's so saying. interesting. I, yeah, I have some. <laughs> castor oil, put it in your belly button, and that will also release the that feeling of tension as well. Beautiful. Thank but you. But they're very happy that you and Rob got together. They think you're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And they said that's healing because I guess there was somebody before that that was not so good. You are the second person to say that. Amazing. You're the second person. Yes. Um, After Oliver died, we met with an animal telepathy person, which by the way, I have to say is one of the most healing things that emotionally we turned a corner and shifted into healing very quickly. All of us. But this woman also brought this up as well. His previous partner was, didn't she? Yeah. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> God bless wherever you are. And Oliver will come back. Not not right now, but when you're ready, he's just going to show up. And he will look very similar. Oh, cool. Huh. How nice. Yeah. He was, he's missed. He's a beautiful soul. He added a lot and of love. Animals do that. Place. They come back. They come back when they're ready. They come back. So people say, oh, I don't want to get another puppy or, you know, but often it's the same one that comes back. That's so interesting. And, and tell me if you would please, because I know you also do gemstones and <clears throat> you even know how to pick what gemstone that would work for someone's particular energy. What is that like? Is that a psychic thing for you or do you, are you given information or do you, you know, need their birth date? How does that work? No. So we have energy fields and the energies in different parts of our body are going to vibrate at a different frequency. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm sure your listeners know about chakras, but you know, if your throat chakra is blocked because you're not speaking to someone, you're having a hard time talking about something or, you know, from being a child or you've got a partner or a parent that won't let you speak and you've got throat chakra issues, which can lead to sore throats, um, even like a cancer or a thyroid problem, right? So that this energy, if you could see it psychically is a turquoise energy. When that energy is shut down, causes the physical problems and you have a very hard time being able to speak about things so um if we were to choose a gemstone that would resonate with that area which would often be a turquoise colored one like a a larimar is really great larimar is the the one from atlantis that's only found in the dominican republic um also a turquoise like the Native American turquoise would be good or anyone that resonates with that kind of energy. So if you put that on your throat, 
if somebody resonates with that, they're going to like that stone. They're going to think it's pretty. They're going to look at it on you and go, oh, I love that stone, right? And then if they wear that stone and it's a good resonant, what it's going to do is going to help to mend or kind of temporarily fix that energy. So it'll strengthen the throat chakra energy. So like, oh, I feel better. This feels good. And what's happening is it's helping to strengthen that, right? So if you have, say, something going on with uh, family right now, grief, heartache, um, something, not all family stuff, but something's more recent, you're going to resonate with stones that open up the heart chakra because your heart chakra is a little bit shut down. We're never perfectly energetically stable. Like there's always something, we you know, we all have stuff going on, right? And so you're going to resonate with the stones that help to increase that. So if you've got stuff with family, you're going to look at heart stones. These are going to be often green stones, like an emerald or a Siberian green. Uh, they also could be a love stone, like a, a rose quartz or a pink stone. Mm. Uh, so the different parts of your energy field and what got you going in what's going on where you've maybe got a block you're going to resonate with the stones that help to kind of increase that energy and you're going to automatically be drawn to them you're going to like that kind of stone and when you have it and you hold it in your aura it's going to start to strengthen it that's why it feels good so I get a lot of stones I get stones from Brazil I found stones all over the world and then I'll have them set you know like for instance, uh, this stone here. So this is a, a golden stone. This is great for soul purpose, for sharing. So I'm sharing my soul purpose today. Can you and hold it up a little higher so we can see? Yeah. yeah. But probably mm -hmm. like a turquoise stone would have been good for today because turquoise is about communication, right? So uh, you'll feel and you'll like the stones that resonate with you um often we get other people's energy around us so especially those that are clairsentient you pick up other people's energy so if you kind of go to a family gathering and it makes you really tired or drained you're at work and it kind of drains you if you're one of those people that pick up other people's energy um protection stones are good so like a smoky quartz is one of the best um or even just a clear quartz something to protect your energy and kind of get rid of other people's energy so um there's a couple of things about it one it's about the the resonance of the stone and how it affects your energy field and then stones also hold good energy so that's why you see healers that will bless stones or you can put reiki into a stone so if you're getting a stone that's got a it, it's say John of God blessed it or it's from somebody who blessed it um, or it's from um, say lords in France it's from a high energy or a vortex place it's going to hold that energy as well and you can feel it some people are more sensitive can feel it when you hold that stone you hold it close to you you'll like it you'll feel drawn to it you'll feel like yeah just that feels good or it makes you kind of buzz and it's raising your vibration, it's clearing out other people's energy, and it's making you stronger in the areas that you need it. So um, I love it. I mean, I think part of it's kind of cheating. I say, you know, we do things that are also not good for us. So like, if I was to eat raw food all the time and work out all the time and be really healthy, my aura would be better. And I demonstrate this sometimes. I like English tea. And so I'll drink my tea with milk and I'll say, do you think that, do you think that's good for my energy? And I can actually test my energy and show you that it's really not good for me. So I say, I really should give up my English tea and maybe have green tea, or I can just wear a bigger crystal. <laughs> that's great. I didn't yeah. realize that. I didn't realize if there's something that your body doesn't resonate with, that you can use a crystal to ameliorate or to neutralize that. Yeah. So, I mean, look, we all have little things, like we have things that we eat that are not great for us. We pick up energy off other people that's not good for us. You know, anytime we have a negative thought, a negative feeling, that's in our energy field. If you have a fleeting negative thought, it's, it's not a big deal. It comes in, it shuts down your chakra for a second, and then it leaves. But if you keep having negative thoughts over and over, and I demonstrate this on stage too sometimes, I'll, I'll, pick somebody out and I'll say something, I'll just kind of give them a little bit like, mm, I'm not sure that's right. 
And all of a sudden, their confidence gets shut down and their energy gets weaker just for a second. And then, uh, and then it'll come right back. But if you're in a place where you're in a negative relationship, you're getting bombarded all the time, or you're at work and you're getting bombarded all the time, or you've got financial problems, or really, I mean, we've all got something going on. And that builds up and builds up and builds up until it actually becomes more dense in your energy field. Yes, right. And so let's parlay that, the use, we'll put the crystals aside. There's a, another thing you do too, which is manifesting. And I know you have this thing called the manifesting experiment. So how can we reprogram our subconscious for abundance? How can we align for greater good, greater thriving? And I always like to say greater magic and miracles. So we're here to have a wonderful, prosperous, beautiful life and to be able to have experiences and to have experiences we need to have money to be able to do those experiences or to do good in the world people get stuck thinking you know maybe it's not godly to have money maybe i don't deserve to have that so you know whatever we put out there in the universe whatever our thoughts are is what's going to come back to us so naturally we're supposed to have this abundance in our life but people get stuck through karma, um, through what people have told them, uh, where they start to think negative thoughts. And as you start to think negative thoughts, you're pushing it away. So we can manifest whatever, whatever we want, whatever we think about, whatever we're dreaming about. But then sometimes we block it. So it's like, yeah, yeah, yes, I want to, I want to have a better job. I want to have a better life. I want to have a new house. I want to have this. And as that thing starts to manifest to you, as it comes closer, something in your energy field says, oh, but I don't deserve that. Oh, I can't afford that. I can't have that. So that's for somebody else. And so we actually, we, we block it as well from coming in. Um, and so, you know, that's a, that's kind of, a, I do a 30 day to prosperity. I wrote a book about it and I have a, have the course. It's free online. If you go to my site and you could take it and I do it every day. And that actually came to me. I say it was my first book that I wrote, but I didn't really write it. I cheated. Um, it would just was kind of downloaded to me and it appeared on my computer. I mean, obviously I had typos in it and things, so I had written it at some point, but I don't know and remember how I did it. And so that's why I think it works really well. And what it is, it's a series of affirmations and meditations that you do every day for 30 days just to reprogram your subconscious to say that I, I deserve to have all the abundance in the universe and that it comes to me and that it comes to me easily without me having to work hard for it and that I am just an abundant being allowing it to come to me. Yes, I learned something really big somewhere along in life and that is to stay out of the how. Because I yeah. think, how, how am I going to get the money to do this? How is this going to come into my life? How is this going to, all of that is the greatest blockage. And instead of just the, the pure energy, right, of putting out and receiving and allowing all of that, I just know miracles happen when we get out of the how. When we try to manipulate it or create it, like, I must get, I, I, I want to do this thing. I want to have the abundance to do this thing, but I must get it from, I must get a raise at work. Then you're telling the universe, I want to have this abundance, but I, it can only come to me in this certain way, right? So yeah, we have to surrender to like, this is what I want. I'm going to put it out there and then I'm going to relax. I'm going to stop like worrying. Am I going to get it? Am I not going to get it? How am I going to get it? I need to get it this way, <laughs> you know? So yeah, exactly. We have to stop worrying about the how and just trust that the universe does provide for us. I mean, how many times is it like, oh, I need this, I need this. And then right at the last minute, you get just enough of what you needed, right? So the universe, you know, we, it does take care of us, but sometimes we only get just what we've asked for because that's all we've asked for. So we have to be a lot more open to, you know, receiving what it is that we want however it's going to come to us and not be so worried about how it's going to come to us. Yes, it definitely. Lifelong lesson. It's not, it's not like I'm sitting here going, oh, well, it just happens so easily for me. I mean, it's easier said than done. 
Right. And I think, you know, like anything, it's a muscle, right? Once you get into the flow of abundance and you start seeing how it gets magnetized and how it comes to you. I mean, there's always higher levels, but there's more knowing there. There's more understanding of how to be, how to attract and all of that. And so this is a free course, I think you said, or a free uh, book with affirmations and meditations. And that's a Gail Thackeray. GailThackeray.com. I took the book and I made it into a, a course. So it's, I do it recorded every day. So you can just go on there and you can watch the recordings and, uh, and do the meditation, the affirmation along with me. And mm. it's every day for 30 days. Beautiful. You also talk about charisma and you know, charisma is really important. I want to walk in a room and have everybody, they don't have to understand, but, you know, feel that magnetism for me. I want to have that on my show. I want to have that when I speak from stage or when I sing, et cetera. So I looked up the word because I think, you know, the etymology of words is so interesting. And it says charisma means charm, allure, personality, magnetism. So is it possible to develop charisma? And if so, how? It, it is, but you know, when people think of charisma, they think a lot of like, uh, almost like an external like showing. And mm-hmm. I think charisma is much more about when you're really in your life purpose, loving what you do, following your life path, and kind of just being on what you're supposed to be doing. People have this automatic charisma because you when you're when you're truly passionate about what your life purpose is and you're following that that purpose and you're doing that thing you automatically you just you know glowing and attracting and so to me charisma is when you really just focus on what it is that you're passionate about um figuring out what your life purpose is. It it usually has some element of serving people, helping people, uh, bringing your gifts to the world. When you're living in that, really bringing your gifts to the world, and it's hard, it's hard to stay on your life purpose and not get distracted. But, you know, if you can do a little bit more on on your meditation, your practice on what am I supposed to be doing, allowing that to be in my life. I want more of that in my life. I want to, I don't, I'm just going to allow spirit to show me the way and open the doors and pay attention to those doors opening. And the more that you do that and you're on your life purpose and you're doing the thing you're passionate about and you're serving and helping people that you're in your charisma, people are looking at you like, wow, I want some of that. And so it's kind of an energetic thing. It's not, it's not an external showing it or how do I, you can't really fake it. It's, it's like a light from within that comes out, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's very attractive when somebody comes in and is like that. It, it makes no matter what they look like on the outside. It is, there's something inside. And I know people like that. It's just, and it's wonderful to be around them. Yeah. Yeah. And we all have that. It's just, we get, we get off track and you know if you can bring yourself back and uh do so if you're not sure what your life purpose is do some meditation on you know what do i what do i really enjoy doing what would i do what would i and some usually it's through how you make money but sometimes it's not it's through a hobby or or something but i I have a book about finding out what your life purpose is but it's you know it's about doing some exercises on some some uh, really digging deep on what what makes you tick. What are the things you've done you, you're excited about? Things you do if you didn't have to do it, if you didn't have to work for a living. What what mm. makes you? What do you feel like you're serving people, helping people? You know, you know. For you, it's expressing and teaching people and sharing knowledge with the world. Mm-hmm. You know, your life purpose. Yeah. Thank you so and much. So you're glowing. You're on your best when you feel like you're doing that, and it's just comes natural you feel like you're allowing it and then you do get charisma you do get following you do like get people coming and going oh that's really interesting i really enjoy that people resonate to you because you're on your life purpose you're on your path mm. yeah thank you so much that's beautiful and what i'm teaching is actually changing you know uh it's very interesting because as i follow my curiosity and curiosity in life 
it also shows up here on the show. And as I follow that and I learn more and, you know, all of these times with people like you, it's like a masterclass to me. And I'm incredibly grateful for the connection and the information and the wisdom. And then, it, you know, things start changing and then there's something else for me. And then I get opportunities and it's, it's amazing. It's yeah, it's not always the same thing. People think, oh, life but it's like always doing the one thing. It changes, but it's the the theme of it is that you enjoy sharing the knowledge. You enjoy um it's not teaching, it's more like I'm I'm showing, I'm sharing, I'm I'm being what I want people to understand. And when you're really in that zone, it's magic. People are really drawn to it. Totally. Well, you're magic. And I know you're going to be speaking February 2024, Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles. Yes. So I know it's early, but what do you have a sense you'll be talking about? Anything that you want to share about that event for you? Actually, coming up a little quicker, I'm going to be in Brooklyn for the New Life Expo on January, uh, sorry, on uh, October 26th. So that's coming up in a couple of weeks. I so never even cool. heard of that. So New yeah. Life Expo in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, it's usually in New York, New York, but this time they're going to do it in Brooklyn. So Fun. On <gasps> newlifeexpo.com. And then and that's a big one too. And then the Conscious Life in February, the consciouslifeexpo.com. Um, yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to be sharing some of this, this spiritual healing. I'm going to be teaching people how to do that because I think a lot of people want to learn how to be able to do it themselves, how to be able to raise their energy and tap in their self, get on the life purpose. To me, once you tap into that energy, it's all available to you. Whether you want to do readings, whether you want to do healing, whether you want it for your own, just your own, whether you're in business and you just want to raise your own intuition. Uh, the other thing I talk about is a little bit about past lives. I think a, a lot of our uh, trauma is coming from past lives. So some of the karma, some of the patterns we're working on, if we can't really explain why we have something in this lifetime, often it comes from past lives. So I'm going to be talking about past lives. And also something I find interesting is jumping timelines. So for instance, I've noticed, uh, so say somebody comes and they're like, oh, I have a problem in my shoulder. I can't move my shoulder. And as, as we do spiritual healing, I see that there's a timeline. We have thousands of timelines all around us that are just like a millisecond off. And I'll see a timeline that everything else is the same, but now that the arm is healthy and we'll jump timelines. So spiritual healing will allow them to jump a timeline to a new timeline. So let's say you're off, uh, you know, you're, you've, you've got a pattern of having no financial abundance or you've got a pattern of negative relationships or you've got a physical issue. Um, we're looking at how do we switch to a timeline or how do we manifest or create a, that timeline to come to you? So how do we bring that timeline into existence? So we keep, we keep manifesting timelines with these problems, with these negative patterns. How do you get on a timeline where you're on your sole purpose, on your sole purpose, everything is perfect and to, to bring that into alignment for you? Yeah, that's intriguing. That's really intriguing that you can connect somebody. I, I would think that if somebody put cold together, I have this issue emotionally, this issue with relationships, this issue, whatever they may be, right? For example, that if you could connect them with the various timelines where these all worked. All works. Get a timeline that's got all the everything working. Have you done this for yourself? I've just noticed it in, as I'm doing healing for people, when I've done the healing that, that is, you know, I've noticed a timeline that's just, you know, it's a better timeline for them that can move them and shift them into. And it appears like it's miraculous healing because they're like all of a sudden like, oh, my arm doesn't work. Oh my gosh, my arm works. <laughs> so it's miraculous. That, that's good. Oh, that pain I had is just gone. It's just gone. It was never there. Yeah, because you're on a completely different timeline. And I don't think people really talk about that very much. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. How do we consciously bring you into your timeline? Nice. Very nice. Okay. Well, Gail, this is Dare to Dream. So what are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Um, well, I just love sharing this. I'm excited to, you know, keep getting downloads on what I should, what I should 
talk about and how to how to get that message across to people and share that with people. So thank you so much for letting me on this show and uh, being able to share. Yes, I've loved getting to know you so, so much. So I won't be a stranger if the next time I see you is in February, I'll come up and say hi. And then folks can get, find you at your name, Gail, T-H-A-C-K-R-A-Y.com. That's the best place. Yep, that's it. Just go to my website. I've got all kinds of freebie stuff on there. Um, we've got the manifesting program on there for free and some other things. And then I'll have some info about where I'm going to be. Beautiful. Thanks so much, so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And I end today's show with this quote from Mark Twain. Stay away from those people who try to disparage your ambitions. Small minds will always do that, but great minds will give you a feeling that you can become great too. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger, Leave a comment, share, I read them all. And if you're listening to us on podcast and you would like to see Gail, you would like to see the dogs, come over to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Also Spotify has us on video. Next week on the show, I am featuring the amazing guest, Mark Anthony. He is a famous medium and psychic lawyer. This is gonna be so much fun, this conversation. Thank you so much for joining us on Dear to Dream. Remember to turn all your dreams into your reality.